Welcome to the very first tutorial on Photoshop. And like many of my videos, this is going to be part of a very, very large series that I hope is very, very informative and that you find very, very helpful. Now, I want to point out initially, this is a tutorial for beginners. This is not for intermediate or advanced users. That being said, we will first start out with images, which the vast majority of people use Photoshop for. Now, I'm going to be using this image right here. I got this off of Wikimedia Commons. Now, if you want to use the same image I'm using, I will put a link in the description of this video and you can go get that image. Now I also want to point out that this image is in the public domain. You see that right here? Now if you go out to Wikimedia Commons you can find all kinds of images like this that are in the public domain. And if it's in the public domain that means you can use it for any purposes. You do not have to put any attribution. And that even means you can use it for commercial purposes. So for any purpose you want it is absolutely free in every way. So that's the nice thing about using images in the public domain. Okay so the very first thing we want to do is click on window right up here. Then what I want you to do is go to workspace and I want to make sure that you have this essentials selected right here. That means we'll be using the same exact workspace, the same exact layout. So if you don't have that selected, go ahead and select that now. Now we're going to go ahead and open up our image. So you're going to go to file, you're going to hit open, and in this case my image is just sitting right on the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and open that and there you can see we've got this nice image of a barn, nice country image. Now the basic layout for all Photoshop versions is essentially the same. You have all your tools here on the left and there are all kinds of things you can do with these. There's shrinking tools, there's selection tools, there's erasing tools. So we're basically going to go through all of these eventually throughout the entire series. We'll actually hit every single one of these tools because they are very very important. Now if you click on each one of these you'll notice that the grid up here changes each time so you get a different set of options. So we'll be going through these options as well. So that's the second thing I wanted to point out. And also, if you right click on the image itself, you'll get a series of different options for each one of these tools. So let's right click here. You can see here it says we can duplicate layer, convert to smart object. But if we go down here to the zoom tool, and we right click on this, you can see now we've got a different set of options. Now some of these options will be the same for these tools, others will have different options. So just be aware of that. And since we're on the zoom tool, you can zoom in and out. So you'll notice here that since this is darker down here, this means we have it selected. So if you hit zoom in, you see it zoomed in. If you right click and you zoomed out, it zoomed out. And you can keep zooming out and zooming in as you want. Now you'll notice on the right here when you first import your image you're going to see that it's automatically by default locked and that's the way it is for just about everything that you import into Photoshop. One of the reasons is it's just a safety mechanism so you don't alter your original layer and these are called layers actually. Now I want you to right click on here and then you're going to hit duplicate layer and then you're just going to go and hit OK you can name it whatever you want. And there you can see we now have a second identical layer that mimics this first one. But you'll notice that that's not locked anymore. So you can do a whole bunch more to this layer than you can this first layer. Now, if we go up to the Move tool, and by the way, you see that little tooltip you get there? And did you see that V? That stands for the keyboard shortcut for this tool. And in this case, it's V. So go ahead and hit V on your keyboard. And there you can see it automatically is now selected. So I'll also mention some of the keyboard shortcuts that you can use for these tools, and it's easier for you to bounce around. So now let's go ahead and let's pick up and move this layer. And you see now how we have that layer in back of it, the background layer, and here's our background copy layer. So that's what layers are. Think of them almost like sheets of paper that are stacked on top of each other. That's exactly the way Photoshop describes layers. So again, that's sort of a key concept to understand. Now, we're going to talk about layers in future videos. We're not going to get into them extensively in this video. Now, if you right click, notice how it allows us to switch between the layers really quickly. That's nice. So you don't have to come over here and keep bouncing around the layers. You can go ahead and we can switch to the background layer right now. Or if we want to switch back to the background copy, we can do that as well. Now, you can always undo everything in Photoshop. And that's really nice. So if you go up to edit, you can hit undo move. And there, look, it's right back where it was. Now, if you need to go back even farther, let's say you needed to undo five things that you did, you can keep hitting step backward and step backward and step backward as many times as you want, and it'll take you back almost to where you started from. So that's really useful if you need to undo certain changes that you made that you don't want anymore. Now, you can always delete layers as well. So let's go ahead and let's delete this original layer. You just right click on it, hit delete, and now it's gone and now we just have our copy. So keep in mind you can always delete layers, add layers, and again we're going to get into this quite extensively in future videos because layers are very very important to editing your photographs. 
Now the other tool that we're going to take a look at in this video is the cropping tool. And that's sort of a very important tool a lot of people will be using in Photoshop. You can see the shortcut for that is C. So I want you to go ahead and select that. Now you'll notice right away you get the whole image selected. And what you can do is you, you can resize the image from the corners or you can resize it from the edges. Or you can actually simply pick the image up and start moving around. But let's go ahead and resize it from this corner. And you can see how we're cropping it now. Now, take a look up here. See how it says unconstrained? That means it's not keeping the original aspect ratio of our photograph. And you see how I kind of changed the aspect ratio? Take a look at that. Now, the second thing I want you to notice is see how we have a confirmation up here? A confirmation and a cancel button? That means nothing's been done yet. The crop has not been executed. So basically, we have three options here. One is to confirm the crop. Another is to cancel the current crop operation, and another is to reset the crop box. So let's go ahead and we'll say commit current crop operation. If you hit that, there you can see. Now we have our image cropped. Now let's go ahead and undo that. Let's undo the crop. We're back to where we were. Now watch what happens if you go down here and you select original ratio. And now go ahead and start dragging from that corner. Notice how you can't change the aspect ratio anymore. It keeps the original ratio. So that's one way you can keep the original ratio of the image if you don't want to alter the ratio. Now, you can also just hit the shift button when you're doing this, and it will also keep the original ratio as well. Now, you'll notice when you release the mouse button here, you get this shaded part. And what that's telling you is this is the part that's going to be cropped off. Everything that's highlighted will be kept. So that's a nice way to see what exactly is going to be removed from this image once you do the crop. Let's go ahead and select this again. And there you can see now we have our cropped image. Let's go ahead and undo that again. Now one very important tool that I want to show you in this video is the straighten option. And this is very useful. Now take a look at this road right here. Let's say we wanted to straighten this road. You don't like the way this road is going. You want to actually straighten this. You can hit the straighten button and you'll see how you get that little different icon now where the cursor is. Now you can go down here and what you want to do is draw a line on what you want straightened out. Now that's the key to understanding this. You're not going to draw a straight line. You're just drawing a line over what you want straightened. So let's draw a line over this road. And then we're going to get our confirmation. Now you can see how here in our highlighted image now, this is showing us what it's going to look like after the crop is done and our road is straightened. So let's go ahead and hit the confirmation button and take a look at that. That road now is straightened out. And you can straighten anything you want. If you wanted, you could go ahead and straighten this barn out. We could draw a line right there. And then the barn would be straightened. So there's all sorts of different things you can do with the cropping tool. And we will talk about this in future videos as well. Okay, I think that's a good start for the introductory video. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.